Hello everyone, this is Devlina welcoming you all to another special episode of Icons Behind Brand and I have a very special guest with me today, a seasoned marketer with over 18 years of industry experience, worked with substantial companies like IBM, Nexus, Nexus India, Oakbridge Publishing and now with Kangaroo Group, I welcome Ms. Harpreet Kaur who is the Head of Marketing at Kangaroo Group. Hi Harpreet, a warm welcome to you on IBB. Hi Devlina, how are you? I'm doing good Harpreet. We are so happy to have you here. I know you're like a very energetic marketer who has a lot of, you know, ambitions and wishes to do. I can't wait uh, to, you know, discuss more about the future plans, the, you know, your expertise in the platform here. Same here, so like always, I would like to say thanks that you invited me for yet another episode and I would, I anticipate that the conversation will be fun as it was last time. It will be great to discuss whatever I have done and obviously share my experiences with, with you about my stints in these various organizations and a and little bit about what I plan to do. In future. Superb Harpreet and and as per I know you whatever little I know you I know there is lot to share and lot to you know know and learn from you as me as a professional that is lot for our viewers and listeners also from you so I'm super excited before we get into the questions Harpreet I along with my viewers and listeners would love to know about you more as a person about your journey and background till here See, I have about 18 years of experience. So currently I am heading marketing with Kangaroo Group. Here I'm responsible for both domestic and international side of the business. There are four brands, which is uh, Kangaroo, which is the flagship brand. I'll talk about the brands also. Mm -hmm. So there is Kangaroo, then we have Miles, then we have Munich, and then we have Kohei. We have House of Brands, which is KGOC. Mm -hmm. So these five brands, I take care of them, uh, 360 degree marketing, which is offline as well as online journey with them started in 2018 kangaroo is is a more sales oriented organization mm -hmm. uh, still is but when i joined them in 2018 it was uh, a, a very sales focused traditional organization it's a homegrown brand it's a family run business when i joined in 2018 the the promoters are visionaries so they have they have the mindset to take the company forward this is the second generation which i'm working with and they have a mindset to to introduce marketing and that is the reason they brought me on board in these four years four and a half years or four four years and two months to be more precise marketing has grown from a one member team to about a 16 people team we have now 16 15 16 people and the entire structure is has subunits i mean like any any marketing organizer any any marketing function which is into new product development then there is digital marketing then obviously we have in-house graphic designing and um, there is e-commerce there is there is offline uh, branding team which takes care of events and exhibitions so the focus is now to take the organization to the next level and that is like i said it is very much in line with the vision of the promoters as well worked with various different companies and you know variety of experience and moreover what i have observed like you have worked from scratch almost in all the you know organizations and i would love to know about something what you have worked like you spoke about startups, you spoke about homegrown brands, right? So I'm sure there are a lot of different kind of marketing challenges, you know, these company faces when you start from scratch. So if you would like to talk about those, you know, marketing challenges, uh, which homegrown brand faces or a startup faces, and wh what are the three actionable tips you would like to suggest for our viewers and listeners i think that's a very pertinent question devlina so when i was working with oakbridge which was which was a startup and it was a it was it was a startup which was which was short on funds there were only three people mm -hmm. and the seed capital was only of the promoters i was an employee with them they were the founders and the co-founders so there the main challenge was three things one was the budgets mm -hmm. we did not have the budget so there the the priority had to be set right that what is it that out of these 10 things, because budget is not there, marketing can yes. be as, I mean, I could spend multi-billion dollars. I mean, uh, if, yeah. if I were an HUL, I could spend thousands and crores of dollars to uh, to do the marketing. Right. There's no upper cap. 
that's the upper cap right yeah. and i i could do pops i could do ads i could do tvcs i could do print ads i could do media ads i could do billboards across all the highways i'll paint i'll paint the town red or yeah. i paint the town with their 12 colors if i had that kind of money so there is no limit to what you can do in marketing Very so when you are in a startup you you need to prioritize as a marketer you know out of these 10 things which is one thing which is a must have these are all good to have which is one thing which is must have yeah. the second thing is and and that will have a direct implication on the first one which is that activity which is going to drive or which is that activity which is going to give you the best result after so the activity which has the highest roi right i could do billboard but mm-hmm. am i capable to do the billboard again and again that is one sure. and is that billboard going to generate those many eyeballs or is that going to generate those many footfalls or is that going to generate that much buzz because it's only the traffic which is there on that road which is going to see that right very true and they are going to talk about so what is that one activity which is going to give me the maximum roi and which i can link back to the results right so so these two factors are are very critical in a startup now the startup is somebody who who has the intention of doing it Hmm. Right, they don't have the funds, but they have the intention of doing it. There are certain brands, and and they they could be family-run businesses, they could be yeah. traditional businesses who have started from scratch. Now, said so today, I start uh, selling something. Sixty years before, it was all production-oriented. The mm-hmm. buyers were not buyers, as in consumers, were not that strong. Yeah, it was whatever is being produced. There were not many options. so people had to buy it was mm. push strategy you know it was all sales oriented because consumer did not know anything mm. today the scenario is completely changed consumer is spoiled for choices if you won't give me what i want i'll go to somebody else because i know that somebody else exists right so here between so many options i need to market i need to ensure that i am pertinent with the right product with the right pricing with the right promotion to grab uh, the person's attention or to grab the consumer's attention so that he comes towards me again and again there is that funnel right there is that funnel you have the awareness then you have the interest then you have the intention to buy and then you finally buy so there is that funnel yeah. uh, which which mm-hmm. we follow so coming back to the point so the, so the traditional way of doing business which was 60 years ago there are people who who or there are brands and there are companies who still go by that mindset you know that if we were able to sell then then mm-hmm. we would be able to sell it now by just ensuring that distribution is there or by just ensuring that the sales oriented mindset is there or by just ensuring that i cover these many outlets i will be able to sell mm-hmm. yes that that is true up to some extent up to some extent you will be able to reach up to a certain level but beyond that the consumer demand has to be generated and consumer demand can only be generated either you provide the product in so many consumer hands at that much price and the that the product quality is so good that consumer comes back but for you to place the product in all your relevant uh, consumer groups in all your consumer consumers which are which are which are relevant that is going to take lot of time so there is where marketing should be pitched in where there is no intent you are actually building that place see importance of marketing first you are just you know making the relevance here and this mm. is how you are going at right right so so it's like you create your hmm. and then you take the baton forward wow. joining as a sales person in these organizations it's not difficult because they are sales oriented yeah the mindset is right they under the, 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 they understand what is the role they understand that uh, it's revenue generation but hmm. here first establishing the relevance you know each and every discussion in which you get into um, you you have to haggle you hmm. have to negotiate why do i need 10 lakh rupees or why do i need a 1 cr budget or what mm-hmm. is the implication which is going to get and in in general also the discussion is that whether you want to spend 1 cr or whether you want to spend 2 cr or whether you want to prioritize between the activities where you have to get the people ready to understand that these activities are required so it's a it's a it's a different ball game okay. mm-hmm. and then that too you have to justify why this much you have to justify yeah, you have the to justify justification needs a lot of energy and time see if you are a marketer so for example you let's say if you are a promoter and if you are a marketer and if i am i am working with you then even though you don't have budgets but you do understand why marketing is required you do understand why these things are required here first of all i'll have to condition you why it is required and then we will talk about why is the budget required 
I think that's a great difference which you picked up, Harpreet, between the startup and the sales heavy and sales oriented companies. Because there is yes. intent, but there is no budget. Here, there is a budget, but no intent. And which is like a, two different problems. So, two different problems. And uh, both of them will need a very different solutions. Here also, the, the intent is not there. And maybe they have deep pockets, but the budget for marketing is not there because the intent is not there. Particularly in your industry, if, uh, what are your consumer demographics, customer demographics, and how the customer mindset in your industry has changed over five years. I want to demographics. So I will say the consumer segments. Mm-hmm. So the consumer segments for my different brands are different. Mm-hmm. So for Kangaroo, it is stationary. So it is household as uh-huh. well as it is office segment. Students okay. and office segment. Everybody. Stabler is something which is used by everyone. Yeah. My daughter. Right. She's just... Taking the uh, just just before the interview, you know, I was like, hey, who who brought the stapler here?" And that was like her. <laughs> okay, so see, um, the kangaroo it's it's majorly stationary brand. So the target audience is office goers mm-hmm. and students in in household. I think everybody has one stapler, one or two staplers in the house. If I talk about uh, miles, there the target audience is is very different. Target audience is a sofa manufacturer. Mm-hmm. Or people who do carpentry, be people who use it in auto sector. Mm-hmm. So there, the consumer segment is very different. It's B two B primarily because even if the consumer is B two C, but the consumer normally works for somebody. So it's like mm-hmm. either a carpenter or it's an event organizer. So they, 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 these are these are the kind of people who will consume that product. In terms of knife, it is split into two. So which is Horeca and the household. Mm-hmm. We use it in household and then. For Eka, we have chefs and in in restaurants and caterers and hotels. And then we have Munich. Uh, Munich is into scissors, so again the audience is huge. So it's everybody. I mean, all of us are consumers. I would love to know. See, being a woman, I have been asked this question a lot, and and I'm sure like a lot of senior professional and everybody, uh, you also. So how do you balance your work life? Uh, and how it is different like see being a woman i know i mean things are a little different and would you like to share some tips with other women professional i think it is it is difficult uh, devlina uh, i remember i was hearing this interview before i talk about myself i was hearing this interview from indra nui and the day she was selected as the chairman she went home and her mother was waiting for her at the doorstep and um, she said that you know i have been selected the chairman of the group mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and she was expecting a hug and you know appreciation and applaud and her mother said uh, that is fine we'll talk about that later but i think the milk is not there in the house or or, or she said that you have to go and fetch the children something like that <laughs> so i mean if a lady of that stature uh, and and she she did speak about you know that there are moments when you have that guilt you are not able to spend that time with the family with the children but there is also an innate sense of satisfaction that you are doing something worthwhile as a professional Thank and you. i think that is something which keeps me going i spend a lot of time with my son when i'm back mm-hmm. i teach him teaching him is my passion i spend a lot of time with him so when i am at home then my entire time you won't believe that i have not seen a movie in in so many years in 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 on film mm-hmm. uh, i have not seen a movie i mean my husband finds time to sit and see a movie while i'm teaching him Mm-hmm. but i haven't seen a movie on tv uh, television entertainment is almost zero for me all i have is when i'm when when i put him to work uh, you know after i have taught him some concept or something uh-huh. then i get some time off to either read a book or you know working on honing mm-hmm. my skills as a professional wow. but it is i think till till the child goes to college that you have to work if you if you really want to shine as a professional then whatever free time you have i mean the first priority is obviously when you go to office it's, it's work right office when you come back home then your priority should be the child or whatever your house whatever your house demands between that whatever time you can get for yourself i think that is where you should invest either in learning or in developing a hobby or in grooming yourself in in some kind of personal development because eventually when you reach a certain stage of life when you become an empty nester when children will go away and maybe when work will also not be there then i think uh, this kind of professional development which you have done for so many years this this is going to stick for you yeah. you don't feel 
uh, that you have not done something in life you have not accomplished so mm-hmm. so going back to your your question of work life balance it is difficult it is very difficult because there would be days when maids will not be there there would be yeah. days when the child is not well and you have an important meeting to attend in office yeah um so you need a very solid support system i am very lucky because i am the only child and my parents are there uh, to support me in in this entire thing otherwise traveling because and i and i am not that parent i don't know there might be many uh, who believe that a child can be put in a crutch i somehow feel very uncomfortable with that so you need a support system if you have to have your peace of mind so that you can give your 100% to work right no i could i mean uh, let to that i mean what you're saying that uh, see work life balance is i feel uh, it just like how based on your priority what comes first and this is how you are just you know addressing it but at the same time priorities are like you know uh, once you go home this is your priority and uh, you know how you are setting your routine and time and how you are investing your time with the family and loved ones i think that that quality is very important important Yes, that quality is very balanced. I mean, rather and, than and 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 Devina, although I did mention that I am not comfortable with uh, sending the child to a crutch, but there also I think as a parent you have to make a choice because uh, you have parents who might not be comfortable in taking care of a child in your absence, <laughs> right? And there you feel that uh, you know I should not be straining them. Uh, mm. Their independence is also most important. So there I think you have to you have Different to make a choice. Yeah, yeah, based on the system. and at the same time support system works you know that that's a great thing uh, for anybody to grow so for me also if you ask like i i am mostly like unbalanced if you ask me work life balance i say ki it's a myth i just go ahead as per it comes but at the same time support system you know they they don't they try not to make you feel guilt and uh, that is where you know you get the energy to move ahead and uh, you know to work work uh, in a pro- professional way so i think i mean see this is one question no for working women this helps a lot like how others are managing and when we know ki it's all same and this is just your priority and what exactly you need in life and you just choose and go ahead uh, towards that right i think there you know also important is the fact that you should be very clear so at times if you are staying with your parents or if your in-laws maybe they are supporting you and i'm i'm raising this question on this platform because there are many who would be finding it uh, difficult yeah. mm-hmm. maybe you are staying with your in-laws maybe you are staying with your uh, your own parents mm-hmm. maybe you have a support system and maybe at times that support system will only tell you that you know why are you focused so much yeah. on the job yeah. job job yeah yeah that also you need comes. to take care of them that that, that, that comes that, that comes at regular intervals mm-hmm. so there is where your steel and your mantle comes to place and comes to core there you have to constantly tell yourself you have to self motivate you have to self back uh, yeah. that for me my uh, my professional accomplishment as a person is very important so i have to keep moving Mm-hmm. and for me as a mother uh, it is very important that my child is not deprived of so there you will have to cut everything in yeah. your life but just focus on these two true thank you for bringing this point harpreet this is very important point i think i mean see this comes very often and very important yes the yeah yeah because they will say that uh you know yeah fine uh, rather than working uh, and and taking up such a strenuous job why don't you take something um uh, which is less strenuous it could easier. be uh, which is easier it could be mm-hmm. something like uh, uh teaching in a college so that you are back home when the child is back home so there yeah. you have to uh keep telling yourself you know that i i am not going to digress from my path mm-hmm. uh, as a woman it's very important because there could be times important. when your partner will also not support you but yeah. you have to tell yourself yeah at some sometimes there are times when you have to be so firm so firm with your uh, decisions that i mean you know i mean there is only you who is like sticking to that particular decision and and it happens i mean so yes this is important it, and it comes to me as well like i mean why uh, you have to become so ambitious weekend mein to aaram kar lo i mean why you have to work on week chhod do ya mat kar ha. बाद में आई ऑलवेज से कि हां मैं मैं आराम कर लूंगी बाद में कर लूंगी दिस इज हाउ आई एंजॉय नहीं यार व्हाट इज देयर सो 
you constantly you are just justifying sometimes you know unknowingly we start justifying and then we feel like why we are justifying because it takes a lot of energy you can put that energy in your professional learnings and your work right so i feel it's all about moment balance and balance there is no yes. set formula and and devlina uh, so like my son is in 10th Okay. and i constantly tell myself that three more years till mm-hmm. the time he goes into an engineering college or what 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 professional degree he will do uh, so three more years um, where i have to constantly pull because after he is settled because mm-hmm. getting into a degree is 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 first stage of settling right yeah after he is settled into this professional life or at least he he takes that set path mm-hmm. then i can devote more uh, uh, yes. time to my professional uh, development Yes, I but think. till that time, I think whatever time you have, whether it's in the mm-hmm. car, whether waking that one hour early, yeah, waking yeah, up that yeah. one hour early, or sleeping that one hour late, <laughs> uh, somewhere you have to juggle. And we do that. We are good at. Yeah, and we do that. <laughs> you know, really, it is very interesting. It was written somewhere that women are far more better. Uh, managers far more better leaders far more better jugglers yeah because we are able to manage so many aspects somehow even we don't know how but you know somehow we manage and then yes we feel so surprised oh my god i did so much like <laughs> yes whether it is everything to do with the needs of the child right uh, mm-hmm. emotional needs um uh, physical needs whatever it is to do with the child uh, i mean me and my husband and i think that goes for so many females i don't know how it is about you even if both of us are educated uh, similar even if both of us have similar professional responsibilities mm-hmm. even if both of us are bringing similar money to the table yeah. mm-hmm. it is the lady who is able to manage all this and who is able to relate to what the child wants extra miles at home yes At, as women we walk so many extra miles yeah yeah and as professional women we are either uh, because of guilt or because of the social pressure or because of the family pressure we are made to or we by choice walk these extra miles so that they feel you know that whatever she is doing uh, for her professional work that is not getting compromised here that's right somehow we start justifying again like to us yes somewhere i mean that that conditioning comes in the picture i think i can talk a lot in this and i can go on and on because this is our experience which we are sharing i mean and it is very important also to our listeners so this is uh, thank you for contributing on this and with that now we are moving to a very interesting and short uh, section of the conversation which is a rapid fire round okay so uh, this is uh, you know i'm going to ask you question and you have to answer in one word or as minimum as possible so this is this is going to help our viewers and listener to mo- know you as a person a little more yeah okay so what is what is leadership for you leading by example super which is the book you're planning to read i have two in mind one is made in made in future by prashant Uh, Kumar, that's a that's a new uh, book which is there, and then all marketeers tell stories by Seth Godin. Wow, that sounds good. So, who has been the greatest influence to you in my profession? It's been Indranil. Uh, if not a brand marketer, what would you be? A pilot. What the best thing that has happened to you this year? Meeting you. <laughs> you know, you made my day. <laughs> When are you most inspired? night even i am a night person i get all the thoughts that time yes early in the morning or late in the night late in the night see because you have the entire day whatever you did you are you you reflect back on that and that is where you collect your thoughts that this is what i want to do. what's the best compliment you have re- ever received that i am very tenacious i am a person who has lot of perseverance what is an important life lesson for someone to learn never give up never give up you will fall so many times by whether it is your circumstances whether it is uh, people around you whether it is wrong choices you have made uh, in your life but never never give up till the till the final moment and thank you so much for being here and i would like to thank our viewers and listeners for patiently listening and looking at us 
So thank you. Sure, sure. Thanks a lot, Devina. My pleasure. It was very nice speaking with you.